in radio. We're part of MAV Radio. Yeah, uh, this is under. Uh, it's a blessing to be a part of Mav Radio and to be able to represent um, this this form of communication. Still talking form, playing music on the radio, things like that. Having radio shows, having yeah, guests. Radio had a ginormous influence on you growing up, on releasing music, calling radio stations. What does radio mean to you? And uh, what, what's your take on it now? But we could start with a history lesson if we'd like uh, on your story of it. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak about it because I've lived through the years. Um, before we had a television, when I was a kid, my Aunt Dorothy, my mom's sister, she had six kids. My mom had six kids. And we all sat in front of a radio, dude. This wooden radio that was shaped, you know, like that. I mean, it was a big with a monster speaker in it and we would listen to flash gordon and we'd listen to the lone ranger and we would listen to the creaking door and everybody and my my mom and aunt dorothy they would pop popcorn and put it in a great big you know grocery sack and that grocery sack would just be soaked with butter by the time we got down you know and those kids are like stuffing the popcorn in our mouth and, and our imaginations were going 110 miles an hour, dude, you can imagine, there we were. And so the, the radio influenced me early on and, and just sitting there and being, uh, you know, close to your cousins, uh, your brothers and sisters, how you grab each other and go, oh my God, it's like, just from what you're hearing, you know, uh, there was no visual. The visual was going on in our imagination. And that's why I have such a deep appreciation for what music has done and can do. But the 777 rule was created by the FCC to limit the ownership uh, to any individuals uh, to 7 a.m., 7 f.m., and 7 television stations. It was the 777 rule. And that prevented the monopoly that we now suffer from. Now, there are still some privately owned, uh, I don't know if MAV Radio is privately owned or if they are owned by a conglomerate. Uh, do you know? Well, so we, we have a structure in place where it's student ran. So we have the authority to be able to, I mean, of course there's regulations with the FCC, so we're not throwing yeah. curse words left and right and everything. And there's regulations to it, which is, which is fine. You know, I think that's, yeah. that's good to an extent, but we do have the freedom to have radio shows, to have student led um, freedom to do what we like with the radio. You know, we broadcast sports, things like that, but having like radio shows and uploading songs and things like that, having the freedom of it is really, really nice. And that's part of the blessing of being a student led um, university radio station. Um, right. What you're talking about is super interesting because it's almost like in the nineties, that's when the birth of the conglomerates is sounding like, right? With radio and the 777 yeah. rule getting um, um, chopped in, in a sense and deregulated. And yeah. what I think was missed there is the structure that was in place. I don't know if it was an, uh, a necessarily conscious structure that was created for this exact um, reasoning to be able to create communities, to be able to create experiences and messages through the radio that leaked, trickled all the way down to the individual like you, that influenced you. Um, I'm not sure if that entire structure that was created with time was necessarily um, um, honed in on when they when they deregulated it. I'm not sure if, if the ones that even had the 7-7 rule had that in place, but the 7-7 rule in your eyes was just perfect in a sense that it was more interactive, you know, people owned it. It trickled down the entire system to the point where again, back in 1975, that's where main you're hearing most of your music. You know, you're not picking up your cell phone and saying, Hey Siri, play this tune for me. You know, you're getting right. most of your tunes and hearing new music on the radio. It's totally yeah. interactive. Exactly. So like, 
I'm not sure what that, that's just very interesting with the structure and how it's destructured. Now we're seeing the result happen over, you know, 20 plus years. Radio is a totally different world than it was, but the fact that it had such an influence on you um, and, and you've had your own songs play on the radio many, many times. What was that? Like how big, how much of an impact it was, is huge with you. Yeah. And let me share with you a moment uh, when it was the 777 rule. It was still in place, of course. Uh, the band that I was in just prior to Grand Funk Railroad was called The Pack. And The Pack, the fabulous pack, <laughs> <laughs> The Pack had gone to uh, Nashville. We drove down to Nashville. And we recorded a song called the Harlem, Harlem Shuffle. And uh, it was one of the songs that was played on the radio in Flint, Michigan, uh, and that, that we really enjoyed <clears throat> and so much that we wanted to create our own version of it. So we went to Nashville and re we recorded in this guy's garage. And uh, on the way back, what we did, we had an acetate, which is, uh, it's like a sample record. They cut this in this virgin vinyl, but it's got a piece of metal under it with the vinyl on the top. It was called an acetate and it looked like a 45 record, you know, with a big hole. So we are driving as fast as we can get away with <laughs> coming north because we wanted to get this record into Bob Dell's hands. We knew Bob Dell, who was a DJ on WTAC in Flint, Michigan. We knew if we could get there before he went off the air, there was the chance that he might play this record on the radio and we would hear it over the radio. I, I mean, this was the first time, dude. This was- That would have been- yeah, that would have been the first time you'd have a song on the radio. And yeah, so man. you guys were driving there. OK, yeah, it's like 1968 and we are driving fast. We're doing 120 miles an hour sometimes. Seriously, we want to get this. And we were listening to WTAC from the state line when we crossed over from Ohio into Michigan. Uh, we could pick it up just, you know, scratchy, but we picked it up. We dialed into him and we're going, come on, come on, come on. We pull in the parking lot, we run into WTAC and we said, Bob, we just recorded this down in Nashville. Can you spin it? He says, give me that thing. And he put it on and he played it right then, brother. And you want to talk about some happy guys, man. <laughs> uh, we were just floating around inside the rail, the, the radio station, about three feet off the ground. <laughs> just, just, yeah. oh my God. We got our record on the radio. It was, you know, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Well, as we are leaving the station, Bob Dell, God bless him. He said, you boys, you see all those albums over there? Pick through them and anything you want, take home with you because whatever you don't take is gonna go in the dumpster. Right. And these are just albums that people, record companies sent to them uh, to have them play, you know, or have them listen to to see if there's a song on there that they can play on the radio. That's back when the DJs had a say in what was going to be what played. was what was going to be played because they just had to throw it on, and you in turn brought it to him in person, <laughs> which is amazing. 